uh, products can be prepared quickly and kept for a short while without spoilage. So products as I said can be prepared very very quickly and uh, you can keep it for some time and it, they are very good for delivery also. So uh, they are doing delivery business also and uh, the product they are making is good for delivery. Good for delivery when I'm saying means that uh, it doesn't spoil during the time it is reaching the uh, customer home. So it doesn't lose its uh, taste or its character, the food character, it doesn't lose. Food can either be eaten in the premises or taken away as packed food. The time taken by the guest right from entering the premises and receiving the food should be not more than three and a half minutes as per the industry norm. So it should be three and a half minutes. The guest should get the food after ordering. Uh, here is the picture of the QSR. You all must have visited one of them. Uh, QSR and FSR. Sometimes uh, examiners are asked what is QSR and what is FSR. So Q QSR is quick service restaurant, whereas FSR is full service restaurant. It provides extensive menu items with everything served on table with waiting staff. Here is the example of fine dining restaurant. Then we have the category uh, which is a barbecue restaurant. The kind of restaurant is specialized in barbecue dishes. So for example, barbecue nation, they are specialized in barbecue dishes. They are providing different type of barbecue. Uh, for example, chicken, prawn and vegetarian, paneer tikka barbecue. So everything, the food is uh, barbecue. Uh, and usually in the open area uh, they uh, set up especially in the hotels so in hotels also sometimes we have barbecue night so we set up everything uh, by the pool or outside in the lawn lawn and we call the guest uh, with a fixed price so they can have uh, unlimited food we, we can attach it with the, one of the uh, uh, promotion of wines or beers so western and indian barbecue restaurants serve beers western and indian barbecue items may be available generally located near swimming pool rooftop lawn seaside and so on uh, it is open during evening hours so it will not open in lunch or morning breakfast so they will usually open in the evening uh, so these are so here we have the next category which is cafe uh, cafe is usually very very simple restaurant and which usually um, student gets confused with so coffee shop and cafe so they start explaining cafe at place of coffee shop so coffee shop you don't have to get confused in this coffee shop is a multi cuisine restaurant they serve food lunch dinner uh, breakfast everything they serve they have a lot of food in coffee shop but cafe is a limited food uh, limited snacks item with the coffee Cafe can be out uh, standalone cafe with where they are serving some type of coffees, teas, and some snacks, pizza, burger. And cafe can be a part of hotel also. Hotel lobby in uh, lobby you can find the cafe where they are serving some light snacks, tea, coffee, all these things for their guests. So salient features we can see here: the American style of service is followed, means everything will be served pre-plated. Seat turnover is very very high, um, so more guests will come and go especially in the hotels, the cafe is very busy. Uh, the average venue per cover is low due to lower pricing of dishes. So if guest orders just a coffee or just tea, so the average per cover will be lesser. Uh, La Fabric Cafe Belgium, here we can see the tables are just, uh, doesn't have any cutlery, crockery, anything. Uh, so very relaxing atmosphere guests will just order tea coffee anything they want to have and small meal items so there will not be a lot of food and everything will be served so there will be some tea coffee and with some light snacks here we can see the carvery in the carvery they are serving big joints of meat which is uh, prepared cooked already maybe uh, grilled or roasted or anything and the chef will be slicing out and give it to the guest. So it can be served in two manners. One is uh, we can take this meat with sauces to the guest table and we can slice and serve in the table uh, in the plate. Or guests can come 
to the counter where chef is standing with his meat and sauces and he, he is slicing and giving. So uh, not to be confused that there will be only one piece of meat and there will be nothing else. So there will be different type of meats if we are serving to the guest. Uh, and uh, there will be uh, sauces, there will be accompaniments, side dishes and everything. So uh, this is the concept of Kavri, we can see here, Kavri is usually offer casual service. So it will not be very formal service. So either guest will visit this station or uh, uh, chef will go to the guest table if it is a uh, formal style of service. Different type of sauces are offered, classic cocktails and beers are offered, Tab de Hot menu is usually offered, fixed menu. Uh, this is the Toby Carvery picture, it is a very famous UK Carvery and uh, they have thousands of uh, outlets. Here we can see the chef is slicing from the meat and there are some other accompaniments, onion, carrots and uh, uh, some sauces are there. Then we have the kiosk restaurant, a very uh, interesting category, kiosk restaurant, you can say or you can say it's a casual restaurant or uh, you can say it's a fast food restaurant. So kiosk is a new way of ordering and billing. So kiosk uh, we will use in the busy restaurants, usually in our QSRs. Kiosk is a um, is a system which takes your order so it saves times it is a new way of ordering and billing at the restaurant it is usually available at busy restaurants guests usually have less time to wait and order their food it has touch screen which is connected to the restaurant viewer system so it gives the comfort to the uh, customer to see all the menu on the screen and price option to select the and order to pay so what it does it gives you time to uh, see the menu properly and uh, order accordingly. You can see the prices of the menu and uh, you can see the what are the items are offered in this menu because in QSRs usually uh, there are a huge queue behind you and you don't have time to read menu properly and you give the order in a hurry. So in kiosk system it has a um, touch screen system you can tap on the items and then additional options will open maybe you want with salad or uh, you want coslo salad and you want drinks with this and cheese and all these options will open and then you can select and finally submit and after submitting the uh, KOT will be printing in the kitchen and they will start preparing your order once your order is ready you will be called and it will be given thank you so much these were the categories 12 categories which we have discussed i hope you understand it if you have any problem um, or any comment you can write in the comment section thank you so much
today i'm going to speak in this video about the non alcoholic beverage coffee coffee is a, one of the renowned non alcoholic beverage known over the world now this video is being prepared to develop a basic knowledge about the coffee among the students and they can utilize it during the covid times coffee is a plant uh, it is a basically a stimulating non alcoholic beverage and coffee is produced from the red seeds of fruit that grows on plants half way in size between shelf and a tree the process that turned these seeds into the beverage is long and complex process but the stimulating effect has made it popular as uh, a beverage over the world coffee is produced coffee is produced from the roasted coffee beans and grinding coffee beans grinded coffee beans from the coffee machines now uh, coffee is a brew drink prepared from roasted coffee beans millions of people around the world look around forward for a cup of coffee whether at home while on move or at work the aroma taste and sense of filling that it gives one of refresh uh, refreshment gives pleasure to everybody research have shown that coffee when drink in moderation is safe for healthy adults and can have beneficial health effects now uh, we would be discussing the different aspects of the coffee like uh, where it is being produced what is of the coffeeical coffee plant it's basically having a smooth taste less caffeine and it is expensive while robusta is having a bitter taste and it has more caffeine inside it coffee is being enjoyed all over the world with by millions of people and it is a stimulating non alcoholic beverage the aroma taste and sense of feeling refreshed is a well known factor that it adds to our lives now we'll be talking about the coffee producing countries coffee is grown in many countries in tropical and subtropical belt in south and central america africa and asia it has been grown at different altitudes in different basic climates with different types of soil it is an international drink and brazil is one of the leading producers of coffee along with colombia Indonesia and other leading producers around the world. In India, basically the coffee is produced mainly in Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, etc. Now we would be talking about the history of the coffee. So uh, let's uh, talk about the history. Like the history of the coffee dates back to the 10th century, and uh, the earliest known evidence of it is being found in the 15th century. Uh, in sufi monasteries of yemen by 16th century it has reached the middle east south india persia turkey and north african countries it has also spread to italy and rest of the europe and indonesia if we like to summarize the general uh, history or travel of uh, coffee is like uh, it has been said that in 11th century it is being in ethiopia then 14th century in yemen 14 to 15th century in yemen 16th century in istanbul 17th century in netherland and 18th century in germany then 19th century onwards in brazil and north america so this is the history of coffee in brief now uh, we would be discussing the coffee plantations the cultivation the cultivation of coffee is uh, done basically in uh, countries in subtropical climates usually brazil coffee plants are bushes of gender coffea and the family of hibiscus growing in tropical zones there are two species which are used to produce the beverage though other species are also available but they are not so much effective the two main uh, source of coffee are uh, the species arabica and robusta now har harvesting and preparation of coffee beans this is the very important topic how the coffee beans has been harvested and what different methods has been used in the preparation of the coffee beans so we would be discussing these all topics in detail that how they have been processed harvested and prepared harvesting is done either manually or by machines by manually in manual process Uh, when the fruits are mature from 6 to 8 months after the flowering from arabica plant and 9 to 11 months from robusta the harvesting of coffee can be done 
Now, basically, there have been two methods: the individual collection and the removal of veins. The individual collection is when uh, the coffee is being plucked by hand and it is being segregated, and the second is it is being done by mechanical methods. The hand-picked coffee is in good in quality, and but it, the cost is higher. The mechanical method of extracting or collecting the coffee it uh, collects more of green coffee beans inside the mature seeds and which leads to more acidity in the coffee so the best method is manual method of harvesting then next is the process initially the harvested coffee beans are processed either by employing the humid or dry methods or the second method is the semi dry and humid methods of preparation first let's talk about the dry process it is the oldest method that requires less machinery in practice in dry climate such as those of brazil and ethiopia so it is being generally done in countries where the climate is extremely hot so these countries usually apply the dry process in dry process the beans are being uh, put in sun for drying and uh, they have been put on either concrete or on mats then uh, after the drying uh, we process it out in drying process generally the beans which has been dried more they are uh, they are not of good quality because they cracked away and the beans which have been not dried properly they have more of moisture so it has to be segregated after uh, sorting fruits are placed in sun it may take several days to four weeks the over dried and the most uh, of the beans which are moist are not suitable for use as discussed earlier also when fruit has 12 to 13% of moisture they are mechanically ruled to remove the covering so uh, when the fruits they are being having 12 to 13% of moisture then they have been uh, mechanically ruled to remove the outer covering from the seeds or the berries now the second method is uh, we have that is wet process wet process uh, requires more equipment than the dry method but it produces beans that are better preserved and has few defects arabica is usually produced by wet method so arabica coffee is generally being uh, manufactured by wet process in the first step of the wet process skin and pulp are removed by pulping machine which consists of rotatory drums or disc so firstly we remove the skin and the pulp with the help of machines then second is uh, we have still some pulp left with uh, that clings to the coffee seed and this has been removed by fermentation then again washing is being done and then the uh, pulp and the dry skin around the seed called parchment is then mechanically removed at the end of the process so this is the wet process generally you have seen that uh, the cherry fruit which have seed covered in silver skin then we have mucilage parchment so these are the different parts of the fruit now uh, there have been other processes also like the pulp natural process uh, which is a uh, method in addition to dry process and wet process after that we have uh, the additional steps uh, like grading grading uh, and storage grading is basically uh, being done to make the buyers to specifically buy a coffee based on certain criteria like uh, for negotiation and for the quality grades are based on characteristics such as growing altitude and region botanical uh, botanical variety method of processing roast appearance bean size density and defect so on these basis the coffee beans has been graded and according to grade they are priced then uh, we start processing of the coffee beans like uh, decaffeinated uh, roasting roasting is the main process then uh, roasting is being done when the temperature are raised progressively from uh, 180 to 250 degree centigrade and heated to somewhere between uh, 7 to 20 minutes depending on the type of light or dark roast desired roasting results in weight loss of 40 to 23% of the grain 
Now uh, on the picture you can see that uh, harvesting, pulping and drying, dry mill. These are the different processes. We have bloom, we have se uh, seedlings, bloom, harvest, pulping and drying, dry mill. So these are the various methods involved in the coffee production. Then uh, next is blending of the coffee. Blending of the coffee uh, is being done to produce the desired flavors. Various coffee varieties are blended together. The principal aim in blending coffee is to arrive at a flavor and aroma which can continuously reproduce. The blender uses recipes which have already proven their taste and criteria in certain particular reason. So these are the process of uh, things. Roasting as we have already discussed like uh, roasting is being done at temperatures between 180 to 250 degrees centigrade uh, between 7 to 20 minutes depending on the type of light or dark roast desired. Roasting result in weight loss of 14 to 23 percent as we have already discussed. Then uh, the coffee characteristic flavor and aroma developed during the roasting process. The flavor is locked within the green coffee beans until it is being roasted. Heating green coffee beans sets a series of complex chemical reactions in motion that release the flavor compounds hidden within the bean. There are three types of roasting generally. Like uh, first is light roasting, which gives coffee a mild flavor, which is drunk, for, ex uh, for example, in Scandinavia. Then another method is medium roasting, which produces a somewhat stronger flavor. It is popular in Central Europe and USA. Then last is dark roasting, which results in very strong bitter flavor. And uh, it is being intended to drink black only. And it uh, adhere to the European taste. Then we have the pictures of uh, showing roasted Arabica coffee beans, roasted coffee beans, Robusta coffee beans. Then uh, next method is grinding. Grinding is basically the coffee beans are usually ground after the roasting in so-called rolling mills. Rolling mills consist of several group of cylinders placed on top of each other. The beans are fed between two finely ripped cylinders which turn in opposite direction and this leads to the grinding of the coffee. So these are the cylinders for grinding of the coffee. Then uh, next step is packaging. Effective packaging prevents the moisture from reaching the coffee. Modern materials like plastic films uh, and other materials that has been used are capable of converting the quality of coffee, uh, converting the quality of coffee for a particular period of time without getting it. Uh, without getting it spoiled. So these are the different packaging. Next we are going to discuss about the purchasing of coffee. The different methods of purchasing of coffee are being termed as soluble coffee in trade. Then uh, next one is individual filters. Last one is ports. Ports are specially designed individually portions of pre-ground coffee. Now we would be going to discuss the different types of coffees that we drink and that has been available in the market generally. Like espresso, short black. The espresso is the foundation and the most important part of every espresso best drink. Espresso is served like a single espresso and espresso double. Short maito, machito, a shot of espresso in a short glass or espresso cup, a dollop of steamed milk and foam placed in top of espresso. This is maito. Then long. Uh, next, we are going to talk about the long maito. Two shots of espresso in tumbler glass and steamed milk and foam placed on the top of espresso. Then next is ristretto coffee. It is a standard espresso shot with half the amount of water. And uh, alternately, we can say that it is turned off of a normal espresso extraction before the espresso starts to blonde. Then next we have long black Americano. In that we fill a cup with two thirds full of hot water and then extract a shot of espresso with the hot water. So this is being termed as the long black americano.
long black americano is a very uh, popular coffee being drunk then uh, next we have uh, cafe latte it is when we extract a shot of espresso into a tumbler glass add steam milk and then 1 cm of micro foam on the top of the steam milk next we have cappuccino cappuccino is when we have been extracting one shot of espresso into a cup adding steam milk and then foam on top of it and the last we sprinkle chocolate on the top of the coffee coffee cappuccino is uh, being loved by the people around the world and it is a popular uh, form of coffee being drink around the world then we have flat white flat white is as being written it is a shot of espresso with in a cup and having a steam milk into the cup but no micro form then piccolo latte it is a shot of espresso or espresso shot of espresso in espresso cup in that we add steam milk and small amount of micro form then last we have mocha it is a shot of espresso into a cup then adding one spool of chocolate powder in the espresso shot and mix add steam milk foam and sprinkle chocolate powder on the top next we have affogato it is a italian dessert in that we add one scoop of vanilla ice cream into the tumbler glass milk and pour a single or double shot of espresso over the vanilla ice cream then there these are also uh, we have on the screen the different types of uh, coffee drinks then what are the characteristics of a good coffee coffee should have good flavor good aroma it should be in good color even when it is mixed with milk or cream then it should have the last good body then we would be discussing about the different uh, list of different coffee companies around the world like uh, first is blench coffee blench coffee in 1992 it was established in vancouver then we have uh, coffee cafe day ccd is a subsidiary of coffee cafe day enterprise limited it is an indian chain and it sells uh, 1.6 billion cups of coffee the next is community coffee community coffee uh, it is in united states and in 2005 it was the largest uh, brand of company in united states the next we have costa coffee costa coffee is a british coffee house chain which is a subsidiary of coca cola company headquarters are in england the next is bean beans bean beans is very popular for producing the organic coffees and they have been working as a leading edge social change organization around the world then deadrich coffee deadrich coffee is based in california first opened in 1972 then next we have dakin donuts dakin donuts uh, dakin donuts uh, is basically they have been dealing with selling of the donuts first but then they started uh, selling flavored coffees and iced coffee it is a us based company then next we have uh, frail coffee it is a uh, also a good coffee chain then we have Jivalia coffee it is the largest coffee in scandinavia selling the next we have ili coffee ili coffee is a top italian coffee brand then it is being produced produced from the selected arabica coffee beans then next we have juan wills cafe it is a premium colombian coffee then next we have is lavaza lavaza is an italian manufacturer of coffee products then we have pacific coffee company it is a us style coffee shop group originating from hong kong with outlets in china singapore and malaysia and last we have not the least port city java uh, this is basically also a good coffee chain then uh, we have robin donuts van hutte so these are the prominent coffee brands around the world now next very important topic to discuss is coffee and health now if you drink coffee you are less likely to have type 2 diabetes parkinson disease dementia liver cirrhosis 
you have fewer chances of getting certain cancers heart problems and strokes now the other side is that it increases anxiety and it may disturb disturb this sleep patterns then uh, it may lead to insomnia then caffeine also interacts with some medications means if you have been having thyroid medications or something then it may reduce their effect or may interact with their working then it may increase the blood sugar levels or slightly increase the blood pressure so these are the other sides of the coffee now we'll discuss in detail the pros and cons of coffee consumption like research have shown that uh, consumption of the coffee has reduced parkinson disease alzheimer's disease type 2 diabetes gallstones cancers asthma attack strokes cirrhosis of liver caffeine then uh, the negative effects as we have also discussed earlier the changes in sleep patterns can raise blood pressures can uh, interact with certain medications can uh, aggravate heart burns so these are some of the uh, side effects of the coffee that may occur decaffeinated coffee it contains uh, the coffee can be decaffeinated and it contains uh, no caffeine inside it then coffee service we would be discussing like coffee is being served in restaurants through vending machines electric coffee makers uh, on site espresso bars and rest stops now how drinking the coffee and enjoying the coffee it is an art like uh, how do you taste and drink the coffee like uh, whenever you take a sip breathe in the coffee's aroma smell it the uh, fresh grounds and then compare that fragrance to the bouquet of the brew then you can smell the coffee and notice other recognizable scents like wood berries earth spices keep an open mind of these smells take a long slow taste let the coffee envelop your entire tongue and all it all of it to taste the taste buds you should slurp freely the more you taste the more sophisticated your palate will become regarding the coffee drinking now how to order a coffee when you ever you go a coffee cha- house uh, generally how to order a coffee is like firstly considering the size like a small medium or large or in starbucks you can uh, categorize into a tall granada and venti then uh, generally the types everybody knows like espresso latte mocha cappuccino whatever the type type of coffee you want to order then next is type of milk like uh, skimmed or low fat organic full cream soya milk so amil is basically preferable for the people who are allergic to lactose so they prefer so amil then last is flavor and topics like flavor things uh, for knowing the having a knowledge of the coffee thank you Thank you.